Hello and welcome to this third year lecture course on atomic and molecular structure and spectroscopy. So it's part of module CH3P2. You all know who I am by now. I should say that I haven't created a Twitter account for this module, um, but I've created a hashtag, so CH3P2. So if at any stage you have any questions you, you want to tweet to me, um, tweet and use this hashtag and I will pick these up. As always with my courses, I've got some recommended reading. So the first two books are spectroscopy books, so specialist spectroscopy books. But by the time you get to the third year um, and doing more specialised material, you should really be looking into um, um, specialist spectroscopy books. Some general texts may also be helpful in this course, particularly for revising some of the aspects from earlier years of the course. So there's Atkins Physical Chemistry, as always, and there are some things which are also covered in Chemistry, the Housecroft and Constable from the first year. So now let's move on to lecture one. So this is going to be about the hydrogen atom. So you'll remember from my first year course about the Schrodinger equation, which has the form H psi equals E psi. So H is the Hamiltonian operator, and then E is the energy, and psi is the wave function. Often it's not the wave function that we're most interested in, it's the wave function squared, so psi squared, which gives us information about the probability of finding an electron in a specific region of space. So this is the Born interpretation of the wave function. It's also worth pointing out at this stage that the hydrogen atom um, and hydrogen-like atoms are the only systems for which the Schrodinger equation can be solved exactly. If you solve the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, you then get your orbital energies. So you'll get the energies for the different orbitals, you'll get the shapes of these orbitals, so s, p, d and or orbitals and so on. And of course you get lots of quantum numbers which come out. So first of all is n, so this is your, your principal quantum number. And n takes the value 1, 2, 3 and so on, integer values. We have the quantum number L, so this is the, the orbital quantum number. And this takes values between 0 up to n minus 1. And then we have ML, so our um, magnetic orbital quantum number. And ML takes values between minus L up to plus L in integer steps. We have S, our spin quantum number. And since we're dealing with electrons um, in, in most of chemistry, um, we have the S is equal to just one half. So because electrons um, have spin one half. Then we have the magnetic spin quantum number, ms, and this is what differentiates between up electrons and down electrons. So ms can take the value of plus a half for up electrons and then minus a half for, for down electrons. Once we've got all our orbitals and our energy levels and our quantum numbers, we can start to think about electronic transitions within the system. So we need to start thinking about selection rules. Again, these selection rules you'll have seen in your first year course, probably with Professor Almond. Um, and the first one is that delta n, so the change in principal quantum number, is unrestricted. It can be anything. Then there's the Laporte selection rule, which states that delta l, so the change in the orbital quantum number, can only be plus or minus 1. These then lead to the hydrogen spectrum, which you'll have seen in detail in your first year um, lectures. So we have the Lyman series, so emission to the state n equals 1, so we have n equals 1 here, we have an excited state up here, and then it emits light here, and this is what's observed. So that's light coming out. Um, and this is what's observed experimentally. And then we have another state n equals 2, 
and we can have transitions going down to n equals 2 and giving off light and this is the so-called Balmer series and there's a whole series of other um, there's a whole number of other series but as, as is often in the case in chemistry as you go through a course and go th into things in more detail this is actually just a, a first approximation and this is what we're going to be looking at in this course the, the details of these electronic transitions first of all in atoms but then um, in molecules so the first thing we need to think about is angular momentum so I, electrons when they're in atomic orbitals they have orbital angular momentum and as you'd expect for a quantum mechanical object like a, an atom the, these are then quantized there's a nice description in Housecroft and Constable if you want to go and revise this concept but you'll have seen diagrams where you have things like you have a semicircle like this and you have arrows within the semicircle So the arrow is of length L, so where L is your angular, um, your orbital um, quantum number, and then the projection onto the y-axis is ML. So in this example here, you can see this is an ML. This is, for example, for L equals one. We have ML is one zero and minus one so you'll have seen this sort of picture before so this is the, the various um, this is the quantization you get here we have electrons also have um, spin angular momentum we think of an electron as spinning um, and this angular momentum is is then quantized in the same way and you can actually draw again a similar diagram so you, you have your semicircle and this so this is the length of the spin um, vector and if you did now so this this axis here is ms and this is plus a half and this is minus a half so we've got these two forms of angular momentum but that doesn't stop there these two angular momenta, the, the, the orbital angular momentum, the spin angular momentum actually coupled together to give the the quantized total angular momentum and this has the, the symbol the symbol J so ang angular momentum is actually a vector so you can write J hat is equal to L arrow sorry plus so it's the plus S arrow so the total angular momentum is equal to the to the, the the coupling of the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum. We can also do this, um, represent this this graphically, um, but I'll come on to that in a minute. So what we need to basically do is consider all the values of ML and MS and their combinations. So now let's let's go and do a, a worked example to just to put this into practice. So let's take the hydrogen atom but let's not just take the hydrogen atom by itself let's take an excited state of the hydrogen atom so that's why I'm going to represent it with a, an asterisk here so let's say we've got electronic configuration 2p1 now we need to think about the different um, the, the, the ml values and the ms values um, in order to work out what the the mj values are so for an electron in a 2p orbital, we have, we, let's think about ML first of all. If it's in the p orbital with L equals 1, then it takes a value plus 1. But ML could also equal 0, or it could also equal minus 1. Let's think about now the ms values. If it's a spin-up electron, it's going to have ms as a half. Plus a half, or it could be spin down, in which case it's um, minus a half. If it's in the M ML equals zero, then it can be it's the same. So it's plus a half, minus a half. Then we have plus a half and minus a half for ML equals minus one. Now we can add these up. So this gives us our MJ. 
j values. So 1 plus a half is plus 3 upon 2. 1 minus a half is plus a half. 0 plus a half is plus a half. 0 minus a half is minus 1 half. Minus 1 plus a half is minus 1 half. Minus 1 minus 1 half is minus 3 upon 2. So we can see now we've got mj values which go between plus three halves and minus three halves. What we need to do now is group these together. And the first thing we can do is we can put these two together. And this is a state which has j equals a half. So in the same way as if l equals 1, we have ml which goes between plus 1 and minus 1. If j is 1 half, then we have mj's, which go between plus a half and minus a half. So if we've done that, it leaves the four other terms. So we can actually group these four other terms. Let's group all those together, like that. And these are going to be the states. This is going to be the values of mj when j is 3 halves. So here, we can see we've got two different states. So we end up now with two, two different states. So we're now going to need a label to, um, to differentiate between these states, the states with j equals 1 half or the states with j equals 3 halves. So this is now um, the what we call the atomic term symbol. So you might have seen this already in courses last year, but it doesn't doesn't do any harm to to revisit it at all. So this atomic term symbol defines an atomic state. So this is the the term symbol here. So we've got the superscript 2s plus 1, and this is the multiplicity of the state. Of the state. And here in this thing S is the total total spin. We've got an L here. So L is the the orbital orbital quantum number. Or the total orbital quantum number rather. And here we have a capital J and this is the total angular momentum quantum number. Okay. And if we have a single electronic configuration, this can give us several electronic states. So in fact we've already we've already seen this here. We've ended up with two states for the the excited hydrogen atom with one electron in the 2p orbital. So let's go back to our, our worked example. So we've got to work out S, L and J to put these into our term symbol. Now it's nice and simple here because we only have one electron. So the total um, spin of the system, capital S is equal to little s, um, which is equal to one half. We've got one electron which has spin a half. So next thing to think about is um, L. So the L value is going to be equal to little l because again we've just got one, one, one electron in one orbital and this is, L is equal to 1 because it's in a, a p orbital. What we do in term symbols is instead of actually putting the number we convert this to a letter. So S if, if L is equal to L equals, is L equals to 0, we call it an S. If L equals to 1, we call it a P. L equals 2, we call it a D. 3, we call it F. So it's the same as orbitals, um, but you can see we use capital letters here. So we've got L equals 1, so this gives us a capital P. We've done the coupling of J's, worked out little j, but as we've just got one electron, we've just got... Um, capital J is the same as little j, so we have j is equal to three halves or one half. We've got two things there. 
So now we need to put these into our term symbol. So the first thing we need to work out was our multiplicity. This is a, equal to 2s plus 1. And s is a half, so you can work out that. Then you get, um, oh, we know we get 3. We get, <laughs> we get um, 2 times a half plus 1 gives us 2. Yeah, get that right. We've worked out L is 1, so that gives us a P state, and we know J is equal to 3 halves and 1 half, so we now have two term symbols. We have this one, and we have this one. So these are read out in the following way. So the, the superscript 2 we call a doublet. So if it was a 3, it was a triplet, or if it was a 1, it'd be a singlet. And then we read the, the last bit just as, as the number itself. So this, this one here would be a doublet P three halves state. And this one here is going to be a doublet P one half state. So you can see that for a single electron configuration, so a hydrogen atom with the electron in a 2p orbital, we've got two different electronic states. So we can now go back to the hydrogen spectrum um, and see what effect this has now thinking about these individual states has on the, um, the hydrogen spectrum. We've now got this total um, angular momentum, so J. So there's now a, an additional selection rule which says that delta J is equal to zero or plus or minus one. So now, instead of having a simple 1s to 2p transition, which we'd expect to give one line in the spectrum, we've now got um, a tran two transitions. If we have a, one, a single electron in a 1s orbital, it gives us a, um, a doublet s one half state, and we've seen that we've seen that a single electron in a 2p orbital gives us two states: a two doublet p one half or a doublet p three half state. So instead of having one transition, we've now got two transitions. And these are both allowed, so we can see that delta J, um, in this in this top case, delta J, so here we have delta J is equal to zero, and here we have delta J is equal to one. So they're both allowed. And this has the consequence that in the spectrum there's actually two lines. So instead of having a single line in the Lyman series, there, if we look very closely, it's actually a doublet. This splitting is actually very small for the hydrogen atom itself. It's of the order of 0.3 wave numbers, um, but for it becomes larger for other atoms. But if you look closely enough, you'll be able to see this, this splitting. So that brings me to the end of this first lecture. So for homework, I'd like you to determine the electronic states of an excited hydrogen atom with an electronic configuration of 3D1. And then you can use that answer and the various selection rules. You can work out what a peak in the Balmer series of the hydrogen spectrum actually looks like. Is it just going to be one line or is it going to be a doublet or is it going to be a triplet? What's it going to look like? But you can now work that out. Then if you can complete the Blackboard um, online quiz and I'll see you in the timetable session. So that brings me to the end of lecture one.